Do you know where mines come from or what they have to do with ancient volcanoes? Believe it or not, over a billion years ago, volcanoes were active right here in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And the leftovers from those eruptions, copper, nickel, and other metals, were used to power Michigan's economy from the 1800s all the way to the 1900s. In this video, we're going to explore the amazing connection between old volcanoes and modern mines, and how something that happened so long ago still shapes Michigan today. So let's get started. This is the Quincy Mine, one of the most historic copper mines in the United States. Mining began here in the 1800s and continued for over a century. Workers followed veins of copper deep underground, some shafts stretching as long as one mile. But the copper they were digging up wasn't created by anything recent. It formed more than a billion years ago during a time of massive volcanic activity. In this spot, we're standing on the result of an ancient geologic event, one that shaped not just the land, but Michigan's economy for generations. So how did volcanoes lead to so much copper being trapped underground? Well, let's take a look at what happened before the first miners ever arrived. To better understand how ancient volcanoes are connected to modern mines, you first need to understand a few basic concepts. The first being, how is the earth structured, what tectonic plates are, and how volcanoes and magma are formed. Let's take a look inside the earth. The earth is made of four layers. The outermost layer is called the crust. It's where we live, where the land, oceans, and mountains are. Beneath the crust is the mantle, a much hotter and thicker layer made of slowly flowing rock. Deeper still is the outer core, made of hot, liquid metals like iron and nickel. At the very center is the inner core, a solid ball made of mostly iron and nickel. Sometimes, parts of the mantle melt and form magma, hot, liquid rock. While most magma comes from the upper mantle, all of the Earth's layers work together to drive movements like volcanoes and earthquakes. Magma rises through cracks in the crust, and when it cools, it can trap valuable metals like copper and nickel. And that's where our story begins. But magma isn't just melted rock. It's made of minerals like silicon, iron, and magnesium. It also contains gases like water vapor and carbon dioxide. That's why magma can carry important materials from deep inside the earth up to the surface, creating rocks, shaping the land, and leaving behind resources that people can later mine. Now that we know what's inside the Earth, let's take a look at how the crust moves. The Earth's outer layer, the crust, isn't just one solid piece. It's broken into huge slabs called tectonic plates. These plates float slowly on the softer, flowing rock of the mantle beneath them. Sometimes, these plates push against each other, slide past each other, or pull apart. This movement is called plate tectonic theory, and it helps explain why we have earthquakes, mountains, and volcanoes. When plates pull apart, they leave deep cracks in the crust. Hot magma from the mantle can rise up through these cracks. If the magma erupts at the surface, it forms a volcano. So how do metals like copper and nickel get inside rocks? One way is when magma cools deep underground. As it cools, some minerals, like copper and iron, crystallize out and collect in certain zones. But there's another way, through hot water. Water from rain or snow can seep down through the cracks in the ground. If it gets close to a hot magma reservoir, the water heats up and dissolves minerals from the surrounding rocks. This hot back up through cracks and fractures. When it cools, water evaporates. The minerals are left behind, forming veins or layers of metal-rich rock. Over time, these mineral deposits can become large enough for people to mine, just like the copper mines of Michigan. Now we'll answer this question. Why are there so many ore mines in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan? Over a billion years ago, what is now the middle of North America looked very different. A huge crack began to form in the Earth's crust stretching from what is now Kansas all the way to Lake Superior. This crack is called the Mid-Continent Rift. As the crust pulled apart, magma surged upward, creating massive lava flows at the surface and large magma chambers underground. This region became an active volcanic zone, with eruptions covering the land in thick layers of volcanic rock called basalt. The rift was trying to split the continent in two, but it never finished. Tectonic forces changed, 
and the rifting stopped. That's why scientists call it a failed rift. Even though the volcanoes are long gone, the rocks they left behind are still here, and they're full of valuable metals that we mine today. Today, the legacy of mid-continental rift is more than just ancient history. It still shapes our economy, our environment, and scientific research in this region. Mines like the Eagle Mine in Marquette use modern underground techniques and advanced technology to reduce environmental impact. These mines produce important metals, such as nickel and copper, which are used in batteries, electronics, and clean energy systems today. Thanks to advanced technologies, we can now reach other metals in parts of Michigan and other rift areas that were once too deep or too difficult to mine. So stay tuned. The story of Michigan's ancient volcanoes isn't over yet.